Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be the children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the nether world on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might also become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in a boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered round him and stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him saying, my daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, you see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue's official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. I've become addicted to the altitude. (laughs) It often happens that in the Gospels, uh, the details are full of meaning. Um, Sometimes the meaning doesn't really pop out at us, uh, but waits for us to uh, think about it for a while or to take a longer view and see this story in the perspective of the whole of uh, the gospel. I have a couple of examples here from today's reading. Uh, What Jesus says to the little girl, Talitha Kum, is uh, a phrase that very likely were Jesus's own words. They are in Aramaic, 
not in the Greek that the gospel is written in. And so they have to be translated for a Greek speaking uh, group hearing the gospel. Which means, of course, <clears throat> that by the time that Mark's gospel is written, maybe around the year 70, uh, the, the message has gone quite a ways. It is not yet, has not yet reached Parchment, Michigan, but it's, it's, it's come a long way. Another detail from this story uh, uh, is clear in the English translation that we're using. Um, it's a pretty careful translation and the, Jesus says, uh, well, the Talitha Kum is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. A less strict translation into English uh, says, little girl, I tell you, get up. Well, there's more to this than just waking up the little girl. Um, even though Jesus has told the crowd, the girl is uh, not dead, just asleep. The word used here uh, as the command to the little girl, little girl, I say to you, arise, is the same word that is, appears at the end of Mark's gospel to say what happened to Jesus on the morning of the resurrection. Jesus arose. And in this passage, that little detail indicates the belief of the earliest Christians that Jesus was able to break the power of death. It is from this power that Jesus will one day free us. It is from this sleep that Jesus will call us to arise. A third example. Jesus acknowledges that the faith of the woman with the hemorrhages, her faith is what gives her access to the healing power that is in Jesus. Daughter, your faith has saved you. And his very next words in the account now to the father of the little girl are these, do not be afraid, just have faith. Should not these words be a guide for us? To us in our time, the fact of Jesus, if our, our faith, at least in our minds, that Jesus is the eternal Son of God become one of us, that he died on the cross and is risen from death, the claim which our faith in his incarnation, death, and resurrection makes on our attention is a call loud and clear to join our faith in a practical way to the faith of Jairus and the faith of the woman with the hemorrhage. If we had no problems nothing assaulting us, nothing threatening our children or draining the life from our families and our neighborhoods. In short, if our lives were not real, we could afford to believe in Jesus without responding, uh, without listening, without depending on him. But if we live, as we do, in such a confused moral environment that we don't know how or don't have the will to prevent violence, to denounce lies, to uncover the reasons so many in our nation and in our world are hungry,
this is what happens when believing we don't feel the desperation that the woman felt. We don't feel the desperation that the man whose daughter was on the point of death felt. And I will say fortunately, the violence is not on our doorstep right now, but it is daily in the news and so are the lies that threaten to weaken and weaken still more the healthful effects of truth in our conversations and in our politics. In part because of the sins of Christians, including the sins of priests, the Christian uh, church, the Catholic church in particular, finds itself struggling to communicate in a way that effectively applies the gospel to set the values and form the mores of American society. Should not we be saying, won't you please come down and lay hands on my little girl so that she may get well and live? We should be saying, my children are in danger. My country, so beloved, is in a recurring spasm of grief and despair over what happens because we reject the moral limits placed on us by God's word. We ourselves should be sneaking up on Jesus to tap into the healing that his spirit is itching to pour out on us. We need peace, but not the peace the world can give, which is the mere imitation of peace that is brought about by silencing the perceived enemy. We need the peace of trusting in Jesus, not in ourselves or in our economy, or in our dominance of whatever kind. We need the peace that accompanies following his way. We need the peace only faith in Jesus can give. Can we not then present ourselves humbly before Jesus in our own quiet prayer? as well as in our communal worship here together. Jesus, Lord, please come down and lay your healing hand upon our world. Amen.